Welcome to the Six Figure Influencer Podcast. I am so happy you are here. Today, we are going to talk about a much requested topic and episode all around pricing and how to think about your prices and how to structure your prices and how to be comfortable increasing your prices and all the things related to prices. Um, It really is such a timely conversation because last month just hit the biggest month of my career, $120,000 in revenue. And in large part, that is because of my prices in the way that I have my offer suite structured and the caliber of clients that I'm calling in. Um, you know, like it, it all has to do, it all comes back to prices, right? Like I wouldn't have been able to generate that if my prices weren't structured in the way that they are. So I know that this is a, a pain spot for a lot of people. And it used to be for me too. And when I'm coaching through this, which I do almost on every call, I am coaching women on their pricing and and helping them to feel comfortable increasing their prices or charging whatever it is that they want to charge, whether it's higher or lower than what they currently have. I have to often remind myself like, okay, I I struggle with this too because I'm so comfortable with pricing now. I understand the value of time now, my time, your time, everybody's time. So it's like, to me, it's no question why I charge what I charge and why it's going to continue to increase. But I, I do remember the days where, I mean, if, if I had, if somebody had told me I'd be charging what I am now, two years ago, I, I, I would be so uncomfortable. You'd be like, what do you mean? How? <laughs> so we evolve, right? You grow as business owners, you get more confident, you, there becomes more of a demand. You start to understand the value of pricing things in certain ways and perceived value and um, the value of an energetic exchange between client and mentor or whatever it is that you do for people. So anyway, I'm excited to dive into this conversation. So what we're going to cover, we're going to start with how my prices have evolved over time because they've come a really long way. And I think it'd be really helpful for you to see where I started and then give you a comparison of where I am now, just to give you like that perspective over the course of four-ish years. And then we're going to go into um, some of like, to me, just, just wisdom that I've gained over the past four years when it comes to pricing, you know, so that like, these are things that like, I kind of had to learn the hard way that you can just, if you trust me and, and if it resonates with you, you can just download it into your mind and, and move accordingly. And then we will go into like how to structure your pricing based on maybe like your full offer suite or individual offers. We'll talk about like ways to go about both. So this episode is definitely for anybody who like has control obviously over their offers and and what they price. You do not necessarily have to be a coach um cuz all of this is I mean it could be applied really to any business. Again, if you have control over your pricing, then you will love this episode, all right? So to give some context around like where I started and what I charge now. Um, when I, I remember the very first mastermind that I, that I, uh, launched was in the very beginning of 2019. It was like end of 2018, beginning of 2019, like January, 2019. So, uh, three years ago, over almost four years ago. And, I was in a mastermind at the time. I was in Sarah Dan's and she was charging, I think it was like $2,000 a month. And I was in her mastermind and I was struggling. 
<laughs> to make those payments. Um, that was like really hard, but I really wanted to be in her world. I knew the value very early of getting at tables with people that were doing what you want to do. Um, so I remember very distinctly what she was charging. And that made me want to start a mastermind. I was like, I could do a mastermind. Like that makes so much sense. I loved the container of it. But when I was thinking about pricing, I was like, oh my gosh, 2,500. Like there's no freaking way. I couldn't imagine. I could not imagine somebody paying me that much money for like that container. I, I just, I, my confidence was not there yet as somebody to run that container, you know? And it's not that nobody had paid me that much in my previous business. I had packages that were $5,000 and $6,000, you know? So I was used to, to accepting and receiving money around that level, but it was my confidence that was lacking. So how I determined my prices, I was like, okay, so what can I get behind? You know, based on what I'm going to be offering in this container and my confidence to deliver on this. And, and I knew I knew the value that I brought to the table. I knew that I could totally run a mastermind and give people a result. I knew that. But my confidence in terms of like asking for a certain amount of money and what I landed on was $400 a month. So my very first mastermind, I charged $400 a month. And then I remember the price very quickly increased to 500. And I think for that particular mastermind, I got up to six or seven before we stopped that iteration of the mastermind. So I, you know, I, I slowly increased as I saw the demand was there and as my confidence to lead that container also increased. So $400 for my very first mastermind a month. And now I charge over $2,500 a month um, for my current mastermind. And that price is going to be changing significantly in 2023. So just to give you like that, the difference in, in the shift and and it makes sense because the the wisdom and the value that I bring to the table now as a business owner with over four years of running her own business and mentoring people under her belt versus zero time and experience prior, really, you know, I, I knew social media and that's what the mastermind was mostly focused on. So it's a totally different focus. But like, I, I bring more value to the table now. Right. Um, also, the value of my time is is different in terms of my business. Like you can't you can't value anybody's time. Like there's no way to do that. Everybody's time is invaluable, but based on like my business and my business experience and my um, uh, my overhead and all the things, like all of that has shifted and changed. Thus, the change in my prices, and it's it's certainly underpriced even today. Um, same thing with like private coaching and, uh, it's funny cause like courses haven't changed that much. I, I definitely have increased the price depending on the type of course, but I still put out plenty of low ticket offers now. I love low ticket offers. Um, they're some of my favorite things to put out and, and to offer. So that hasn't changed much, but private coaching has changed a freaking lot. I couldn't remember what exactly I was charging back then, but I it was it was around like I used to offer like one off calls, which I don't do anymore. I don't you can't just like book a random call with me. You have to like book a package. But then I know it was like, you know, three hundred dollars a call, if even, maybe even like two hundred. And I just pitched a hundred thousand dollar coaching package today as I record this and didn't bat an eyelash. And like, I have no doubt it will like somebody's going to book it. I have no doubt in my mind. So that shows you like, again, it just like, I want to give you paint this picture for you because what I see a lot of people doing when it comes to their own offers and their own business is there's a lot of comparison. 
they'll reach out to me about one of my packages or my mastermind. They'll see what I'm charging. And then they're like, oh, is that what I should be charging too? And it's like, well, no, because we're not the same person, right? We don't have the same business. It, it might, like, depending on your personal stuff, it the, the numbers might align and match. But like, no, you, you do not base your prices based on anybody else's business, period, period, because you two are not the same. And you guys don't have the same background and the same anything, anything. So I see a lot of people doing that. Um, thus, they feel pressure to either overcharge a price or, you know, overcharge, meaning like their confidence isn't a match yet. So they're overcharging what they're actually comfortable charging. So I see a lot of that. And then they end up not selling it because they don't have the confidence and the energy to back that price. Or, and you see this more, a lot of people underpricing because of what they see other people doing or what historically has been done or whatever. Um, because they feel greedy charging what they actually want to charge or what they think they should charge or whatever. So anyway, I that's why I wanted to share like the the change in my prices and I grew into them. I evolved into them. And because I am so confident in my prices. I find people, I speak to people, I am a match for people who will pay those prices. There are always people out there who will pay your prices, period, if you can back your prices with a match of energy, right? Which just means you back your prices. You, you, like, if somebody were to be a perfect fit for the mastermind and, but then come back to me and be like, hey, this is too expensive. Like, how are you charging this? Can I pay a thousand dollars less? I, it wouldn't like, no, (laughs) the price is the price. I'm so firm and confident in that. And because of that, because I back my prices so much, I attract matches for that. And it also, it's fair to say too, like I, I pay these prices myself. Like I, I invest in my own coaching, you know, so like I am also a match for for attracting in these level of people because I pay them myself. So anyway, I wanted to give you like that that comparison. All right, so here's like some points of wisdom that I've learned along the years from pricing and and evolving and just like growing my own business and and all the things that come with that through the lens of pricing. So I want to cover um, this first because I didn't write it down and I'm scared I'm going to forget. There is such thing as perceived value. Okay. So when you are pricing your packages, you have to take into account the type of person that you're wanting to attract into your world and the perception you want people to have of your brand. If you are a brand and you want to be known as accessible and as affordable, perfect price in such a way. But there are a lot of people who want to be considered a luxury brand or a super exclusive brand or high level, you know, something along those lines, but then they're charging an amount that anybody who knows anything about pricing in that industry, they'd be like, wait, this doesn't make sense, right? It'd be like if you walked into a Louis Vuitton store and they had a purse for $30, you'd be really confused. You'd be like, okay, there must be something wrong with this bag. Like this must, this bag must be like hexed or something. (laughs) You know, like why this doesn't even make sense. This is a luxury brand and you're charged like, wait, what? So that's really important too. And a lot of people forget to take that into account. So they're, they're charging something. They're positioning themselves as like a luxury brand but their pricing is so low in line with other like more affordable brands or whatever. So people like ideal clients, people they want to work with, see that pricing and they're like, wait, why is this so low? They don't think like, ooh, yay, I'm getting a deal here. They question like, 
okay, it, are you not confident in what you bring to the table? This is like your pricing says a lot about where you're at. And I don't say that to make you feel insecure if you're more of a beginner and if your pricing is lower than mine or somebody else's. I'm not saying that at all, but it is something to take into account for sure is perceived value. Okay. So I just wanted to say that. Um, And then another thing that I didn't write down that I also thought of is this idea of like an energetic exchange. And this is why I personally am... Like I really don't love doing free discovery calls. And the only time that I will offer a free discovery call is if somebody is seriously interested in booking like a bigger package with me, like a longer period of time, because I get it. We want to make sure we're a good fit. And I also want to make sure we're a good fit. But other than that, I'm not going to take time out of my day to get on a Zoom call with you to talk about a program that like I've made a full sales page for, or even a mastermind spot in some cases when like we could just go back and forth via via Instagram and I'll, I'll answer your questions all day. But like there's this energetic exchange with people, right? Like when you... When you charge the amount that you are worthy of, that you feel comfortable with, that that you need to keep your business afloat, that you desire to feel excited to deliver a package, when you receive that from somebody, you are going to show up so much differently in such a different energy versus if you're undercharging. You're automatically just going to give them more when you're feeling safe, secure, and um, excited to receive that amount and vice versa, right? If that person is paying a certain amount, they're going to show up differently in the call. You know, and I hear a lot of people who are, who are ch- undercharging and they're like, well, I get a lot of no-shows or they do a bunch of discovery calls and, and people aren't respecting their boundaries or they don't show up. And it's like, yeah, because they, they have zero skin in the game right? Like if I paid pennies on the dollar for this hour long call, I'm probably going to take it less serious than if I paid hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in different cases, you know? So that energetic exchange is really powerful. And you're really, it's one, a responsible thing to consider as a business owner, but two, it really is a gift for your client because it, again, it just like, in a lot of cases, it will help them take it more seriously and and actually show up and do the work and do their part versus taking it for granted because they got it at such a cheap price or for free in some cases. So I wanted to cover that. A couple of other things that I want to share. As a business owner, this is this is obvious, but it's it's easy to forget whenever we're pricing. Our job is to generate money, consistent money, good money to stay in business. If you do not, if you do not know the amount of money you need to generate to cover your overhead, to cover your bills, to keep your needs met, your family needs met, if you don't know that number, then you're not going to be able to price accordingly. And it will only be a matter of time before you're out of business, before you can't... It doesn't even make sense for you to be in business because you're spending all of this time for such little revenue because you're not being intentional with your pricing or you're scared to charge what you need to charge or what you want to charge. So you have to remember, like there, there's no emotion here. Right. There's no saying like, well, I don't want to be greedy or like, what if somebody can't afford or I want to be accessible? Or I had a call with a client the other day. She said, Well, I just really believe that that this service should be offered to everybody, that everybody should be able to access this service. And she was talking like about a private service with her. And I said, Okay, so I want you to do the math there. Like, how many if if you were to offer this just to anybody, you know, who could pay you whatever, how many clients could you take a day? I could take four clients a day. Okay, for five days. So you could see 20 people. Okay, so you're helping 20 people uh, get this service. You're making zero money. 
So you'll only be able to do this for a week, maybe two weeks before you're out of business. So how many people have you really helped here? Because you're trying to make yourself so accessible. Or for your private services, you charge what you need to charge and you make your free content fire, right? Like you you actually put value in your content and, and you create different tiers of offers for the people who can't afford to book your one-on-one. You have trainings that are lower ticket or a mastermind, right? Like you have an offer suite that allows you to serve more people this is going to like that's going to ultimately scale your business so take the emotion out of it you you are not a savior you are a business owner okay and your job is to make money and the amount of money you need to make in your business to stay afloat is very different from mine and the people that you look at online and oftentimes you're not going to know why somebody charges what they charge because you don't know the back end of their business so if you keep comparing yourself and charging what other people are charging, then it, like, it doesn't even make sense. Okay. So take the emotion out of it. You are a business owner, period, and your job here is to make money and the amount of money that is going to uh, keep you passionate about this business. So you want to run it and also in business. So it makes sense to run it. The second thing here, or I guess now the fourth, I'm not going to keep track of numbers. I didn't number these, is, uh, I already, I already covered this anyway. It doesn't matter what other people charge because you aren't other people. And that's another thing to consider. You don't have the same back end as other people, the same overhead, the same goals, the same aspirations for your business, the same anything. And you are not the same as other people. You bring something else to the table. So in the same way that there are so many different business podcasts out there and mindset podcasts and all the things, for some reason, you listen to mine, right? And it's not necessarily that I'm talking about other things. I'm not talking about like super radical things that other people aren't talking about. It's just for whatever reason, you like, God bless you, the way that I talk about things and and the energy that I bring to the table. Same thing. Like I, I'm a business coach. I'm a business mentor. There are women who, I mean, you, they could, Business coaches are dime a dozen. You have your pick of the litter, but for some reason they they want to work with me because of my experience, because of my philosophy, because of just the whole picture of what I bring to the table. So it's it's not because of what I charge, it's me, it's who I am. So this industry standard of like, well, you know, other coaches are charging this or other people are charging that. It again it doesn't matter and you are your you are the differentiator here nobody is you and that's like it's such a cheesy saying but it's so true like you can charge whatever the hell you want and be the only one who does it because you are the only one who's offering it right you you are the differentiator you're the difference here so if somebody's like well who are you to do blah 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 I, i'm me and that's what i'm deciding to do so if you can back it with that energy, you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, so it doesn't matter what other people are charging because you are not other people. Another thing that I've learned that I need I need everybody to stop doing is generalizing an entire audience or an entire demographic of people. The amount of times that I've heard people say, well, my audience doesn't pay or doesn't invest in blah, blah, blah. Or, well... Yeah, but that generation, they're not used to investing in blank or these type of people. That's just not, they, they're used to paying whatever. Stop. First of all, that's not accurate. Like you cannot generalize an entire, that's, there's no way that that's true. First of all, second of all, if you go into it with that mentality, that's what you're going to get. Right. If you go into and you you go to price something, but you're like, well, my audience won't pay anything over this, then you're gonna charge, you're gonna undercharge and it's gonna be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So that is not a helpful story for you to tell yourself. And it's not true. I see this all the time. Like one of the most notorious examples of this is direct sellers. I can't tell you how many times people have been like who have a pretty big audience of direct sellers. They're like, yeah, but 
they're used to, you know, they're, they don't pay anything. They're used to getting all of this for free. So there's no way they'll pay X or whatever. So they just go into it with this blind assumption that their entire audience of hundreds or thousands of people will not pay what they pay. So of course they undercharge and again, self-fulfilling prophecy. Or they do charge what they want, but they have this fear in the back of their mind and they're not a match for like, if, like people are going to pick up on that. You're not going to, it's it's also going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. But like, what's so funny about direct sellers is I can't tell you how many of my clients that come from the direct sales world that are, or are still in the direct sales world that pay my highest ticket offerings. So there are, again, for every price point, there are matches out there. But you have to believe that, one, and you have to speak to them. You have to market to them. That's the other piece of this that we're not going into in this episode, but maybe in another one we'll go into if you want me to. Um, you, You also have to be marketing to this specific audience, but there's always a match, always for the price that you want to charge. So you generalizing a huge group of people is, it's not serving you, said the easiest way, and it's not accurate. Another thing that took me a really long time to learn, but now serves you really well, is understanding the value of our most precious commodity, which is our time. Okay, we have no other commodity that we cannot get back. Like you cannot get back your time. So when I see people charging or undercharging for their private mentorship, it makes me want to scream. Like I get it because I used to do the same thing, but it's like, wait, what are you doing? This is like literally... You cannot get this time back. You have kids, you have a life, you have babies, you have, you, there's so much, You there's so many other things you could be doing. And you're going to sit here for an hour with this human for free or for a hundred dollars or whatever, you know, whatever, again, you your prices will evolve. So what I want to say here and to like really help you understand is your one-on-one offers or anything personalized should be priced as such. Not everybody is meant to be your private client. Not everybody is meant to, nor desires a level of personalization in whatever it is that you bring to the table. So have that as an offer, but get really clear on, okay, what is the value of my time? So like do the math, do the math based on how much money you need to pull in to stay afloat or to bring in whatever it is that you want to bring in. What is the value of each of those offers? You know, and like, like, what does that need to be priced at? Um, based on like how much time you can devote in your business, start there and then increase. And what you'll realize is, and this is what I realized, that I love working one-on-one with people, but in a way, like I could make more money creating a program in some cases, especially how I used to price my time. I, I started to understand like, wait a second, I'm spending four hours total with one person and they pay me this amount a month. If I spent four hours creating and delivering a program, I could sell that program to 10 people, five people, and make double, triple what that private client is paying me. So it's it kind of like, you know, it connected the dots for me a little bit and it helped me to understand, wait a second, I'm, this is not a smart business move. Like the way that I'm pricing is not, it doesn't even make sense with what else I can bring to the table and, you know, like what other offers I could put out there. So you really want to take that into consideration. If you are going, and this is again why we want to diversify our offers and offer 
if you want, you know, free content for marketing, and then you could do lower ticket programs, lower ticket offers, uh, one to many, one to a few, mid ticket, lower ticket. That's fine. But anything private or personalized needs to be priced as such. And if you're like, yeah, but people won't pay that. Stop saying that because that's not true. And there will be people. Or you're like, well, there won't be so many people to pay it. Yeah, you're not worth so so fill that gap with other offers. You're much better off taking on less private clients and and creating some sort of other offer versus filling your entire schedule of private clients undercharged. Okay. Another thing, it does not matter what people can and cannot afford because they are not running your business. Get your mind out of people's wallets and pocketbooks. It, it's none of your business. None. I cannot tell you how many times it has happened where somebody who like, I thought for sure wouldn't be a fit for an offer just based on like things that they've told me in the past. You know, they've like reached out about another offer and they said, oh, well, I don't have the money for that or whatever. But then I put out the right offer and guess what happens? They figure it out, right? Like people will bend over backwards. You see this all the time with freaking iPhones and cell phones and technology. Things are like, People like they they fit magically figure it out. So this is where you get to have fun with your offers and put out a bunch of different things because one offer may not be a match for somebody and they they may not be, you know, and they use the excuse I can't afford it. But if you put out the right offer, the one that like they actually need, they actually desire, you'll be surprised how many people find a way. Okay. But regardless, it it's none of your business. It is none of your business what somebody can and cannot afford. You could charge $20 for a session or $20,000 for a session. And there will be people who think it's either underpriced or overpriced. Always, no matter what the price is. You cannot make everybody happy. So you have to get clear on what do I need as a business owner? Who am I trying to attract? And what is the match there. And and also like, what am I comfortable charging? And that's what we charge. All right. So there will always, 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 always test this yourself. Test this yourself. There is always a match to any price you want to charge. Any. If you are willing to back it with your energy and market appropriately to that specific person. And then the last thing I want to share with you about prices in pricing is again that they they will always evolve they will always shift so i don't want you to hear this episode and feel pressured to increase your prices unless you desire to unless you know in your heart that it's time because you'll know when it's time right like i i feel a feeling in my gut when it's time and i i i look for that now so i haven't felt that in weeks I've felt very good about my prices. And then all of a sudden, like two days ago, now I'm like, I really need to increase the price of my private coaching. It's time. It's just time. I just know. I know it's time, you know, and I I haven't felt like it just, it, it just came to me. You know, now's the right time. My level of confidence, the level of demand, all the things, it is time to increase the prices. So trust that you are much better off starting your prices at a point that you feel really good and confident about while also being a responsible business owner and then increasing your prices as you go versus the other way around versus, well, Ali said I should increase my prices or so-and-so charges this. So you increase your price to some amount that you're not confident and then you go backwards and you decrease it. Because if people see that, then that's not that's not the vibe. You know, they'd be like, why is she decreasing her private coaching? That's what's happening there. So your prices always get to and will evolve. 
and increase, but it is best to start with where you are, um, where your confidence is now and increase as you continue to grow and as you feel comfortable. Okay. So as far as like how to price your offers, there's many ways to do this, but there's two ways that I'm going to outline for you here. There's like a big picture approach based on all of your offers. And then there's more of like a micro approach based on individual offers. So, and I'll, I'll tell you like what mine is. Um, so big picture approach. This is where you would look at your entire offer suite. So your offer suite is a set of offers that's available at any given time, right? It's like, These things are typically always available. It's something that people can inquire about at any given day in most cases and and book if they want to. So like for me, mine is I have um, three, three, six, and 12-month private coaching. Depending if I have spots, I have my mastermind. And then I have lower ticket offers like trainings and programs that people can buy at any time or that I'm launching randomly. And then I'm also randomly launching, you know, one or two micro offers a month, depending on my mood. So that's what mine is. So if you're doing like a big picture approach with your pricing, then what you're looking at is you kind of want to start backwards based on the amount of revenue that you want to call in each month or, you know, for a year, even if you wanted to. So what that would look like is, based on your bills, based on your expenses, you know, your business overhead, based on what you need and what you desire. Cause that's important too. Okay. What I need to keep, I have, I run a pretty, um, I have a pretty lean business, but I don't base my charges or I don't base my prices based on just what I need month to month. Like I'm not just trying to break even. Like I'm trying to live my freaking life here, you know? (laughs) So I know what I need to break even. And I know what I desire to bring in each month because of my bigger picture, because of how I want to live my life, because of doesn't matter because it's what I want. Okay. So you get clear on that number for yourself. You could do it for a year. You could do it and then break it down for a month. And then you set your prices accordingly. So if you know, okay, I'm going to have private coaching package. I'm going to have this package. I'm going to have this package. And then I'm going to have these packages. So then you would kind of decide, okay, how do I price these accordingly? And you kind of play because you don't know how many people are going to be in which package, but you can guess or you can set goals for yourself. Okay. I have a mastermind. So I need at least 10 people in this mastermind at this price to hit this amount. I need at least this many private clients at this price to hit this amount. I need to sell this amount of programs each month. And all of it adds up to the amount that I desire as a business owner each month or close to it. So you can take that approach or you can do more of like a small picture approach, which is where you would do um, per offer. Right. So maybe you have your offer suite and all that's good, but this is you, you're creating a random offer and you're trying to depend, you're trying to determine the price. So the way that I do this, I do this with my micro offers. So I have like my standard business uh, revenue, you know, that comes in from private clients, that comes in from mastermind, that comes in from the trainings that I launch. Like that's strategically set each month. But then, If I have space and I feel inspired, I'll throw out what I call micro offers, which are offers that I just, I feel inspired to put out. Like today I put out um, an offer called Protege, which is a 12 month private coaching container where I help you build your $500,000 plus coaching business over the span of a year together, hand in hand, you know, like my highest level offer that, that I have. And that just like came to me and it felt so fun. I was like, I have the space to do this. I That would be so fun to do. I know that I could help somebody kill this. Let's go. So that's a micro offer. So whenever I do this, I base it on, 
okay, how much, how much money do I want to generate from this offer? So I also did this at the end of June because it was, you know, it was a really good month, but it was like the last day of the month. And I shared this in previous podcast episodes. It was the last day of the month. And I was like, it would be so cool to generate an extra 20K before month end, like in the next day. Like that would be so fun. So I was like, okay, if I want to generate 20K and then I worked my way backwards, how do I want to do that? Okay, I want to offer something private. I want to offer like 30-day coaching to X amount of people where they get this many calls. All right, how many spots do I have available to book if I want to generate this? I have five. So these package or no, four. So these packages need to be at least $5,000 each. So you can play with your pricing that way based on like your bigger goal or your smaller goal and start with the pricing. Or you can also reverse that. And and I do this too, where I know I want to put out a program. Like I know I want to put out a program on how to sell on stories, like stories that sell. Okay. I map out the offer. I know the value of the offer and what they're going to be learning. I know about now, like how many people will likely buy this. So what do I price it on based on those things? And then I determine the price that way. So there are many different or a few different ways you can work your, your, to come up with a price. You can work backwards from the price down or the offer up and get to the price. Okay. So to sum it up, pricing should be very personalized because you are very personal. (laughs) You're very different. You are the differentiator. You have your own set of requirements and desires for your business. That's very different than everybody else as it should be. So your prices should be set accordingly. And ooh, one more thing I wanted to add to is if you haven't done this before, this has been really powerful for me. And I know that this lended to me hitting these bigger revenue goals for myself lately is getting clear on why. Why I not only can or should or... How do I want to word this? Like why I could hit six figures a month, you know? But why I should. Because here's the thing, like at some point, you hit a level of revenue where all of your expenses are covered. Every single one. All of your bills are paid. You have money in the bank. Life is good. You have some leftover. So it's like everybody gets to this point where it's like, okay, why push harder? You know, unless you are very internally motivated and you just want to see how far you can get, there's going to be a point where it's like, I like, why go harder? I, I already work a certain amount or whatever. You know, so going from that good to great. So you want to get clear on what happens when you hit those bigger levels of revenue that you actually desire each month. So for me, the big thing was at the time was six figures a month. And that's still, that's still it for me. Like that feels really good. Eventually it'll be multi six a month, but six figures a month. And at first it was like, okay, but that like, what does one even do with all of that? But in reality, there's so much that I can do with that, that benefits not only myself as a human, but my family, my legacy, my team, and the amount of impact and the amount more that I can do for you, right? So like another way to think about this is like, what is the ripple effect? of a certain amount of money being in your hands. So I made a list. When I'm making six figures, what gets to happen? What do I get to do? And I made this full list. I get to contribute X amount to savings. I get to invest X amount to whatever. I get to give my team a bonus. I get to buy this. I get to 
share this, you know, like I get to inspire you. I get to tell you that it's possible getting like super clear. It makes it more, it shifts it into something that would just be nice and fun and like pie in the sky to like, wait, this, this has to happen, right? Like money is so good in my hands. They're like, it, it's so well served in, in my hands, the more money that my business makes, like, look at this incredible ripple effect and all that gets to happen. The more that I, I allow to flow into my business. So I encourage you to do the same for yourself because it's really going to bring it into picture. Like why go bigger? Here's why there are many, many reasons why, what does that do for your kids? What does that do for, for your partner? What does that do for your, your peace of mind, your fun in life. You know, there, there's so many, so many incredible things that you get to do. The more money that your business comes in, the more people you get to hire, uh, via your business or, you know, contractors around your house or personally, professionally, there, there's so much. So that was huge for me. But anyway, I encourage you to think on it. Give yourself some grace. Don't force yourself to be at a certain level that you're not at. Just allow yourself to grow and evolve over time um, and choose your prices in a way that at the very, very least makes sense as a business owner and then go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please share it in your stories so we can get this out to more women that also could find value from it. Um, let me know if this was helpful for you and I will see you here next week. I love you. Bye.